Hello, sweethearts. Welcome to an amazing session on transitional poets. The transitional poets are very important because they come in between the Augustan poets and the Romantic poets. As all of you would know, Augustan poetry is about what? Order, clarity, rules, decorum. Augustan poetry is poetry of the town. Almost exactly the opposite is romantic poetry. What is romantic poetry about? Emotions, imagination, nature, rural people and rural solitudes. The transitional poets had elements of neoclassicism as well as romanticism. The transitional poets were actually reacting against the intellectual Augustan poetry and their poems were suffused with a sense of mystery and wonder. Their poems were about rural people, death and very romantic themes written in a neoclassical style. Among the transitional poets, there are so many poets actually. One of the oldest is James Thompson. James Thompson is well known for his poem, The Seasons. The Seasons is a truly pastoral romantic poem about the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter. And here, James Thompson talks about the countryside and romantic values. A very important aspect of Romanticism is nationalism, patriotism. Did you know James Thompson wrote patriotic poems, a very popular song called Rule Britannia. Have you heard of that? Well, English people would have, would have heard of that. It is actually by James Thompson. Like the seasons, there is another very famous poem, poem by James Thompson, that is the castle of indolence. You know, world weary travelers, they are trapped in a dungeon by the wizard of indolence. You know, like we are, after studying for many months, we are weary, we can't do any more, world weary. We become indolent or lazy. I can't study, this is enough. <laughs> that feeling is indolence. And then who comes? The night of arts and industry. In your case, that night's name is Kalyani Valath. <laughs> I won't let you take rest, would I? I will say, come on, get up, let us study transitional poetry like that. These world weary travelers are awakened by the night of arts and industry. He is rescuing these travelers from the dungeon of indolence. Did you like the story? That is James Thompson's Castle of Indolence. Read extra. When you Google search, you will also come across a painting. You know, indolence, there is also a famous painting. So that is about James Thompson. James Thompson had a very dear friend who was also a transitional poet. That is William Collins. William Collins wrote uh, an elegy on James Thompson. In yonder grave the druid lies. That is the elegy. Then there is another poet who contributed significantly to transitional poetry. But you don't know him as a transitional poet. Perhaps you know him as a playwright. He is the author of The Good Natured Man. She Stoops to Conquer. Bolo Bolo. Who is that? Oliver Goldsmith. Yes, Oliver Goldsmith was also a poet. He wrote The Traveller and The Deserted Village. Hmm, that is not all. He wrote many poems actually. Especially they are part of our Vicar of Wakefield, the only novel by Goldsmith. The Traveller is about a narrator who is travelling abroad. 
he is feeling nostalgic about his homeland and his brother and writing about it in his poem. The deserted village is a rural idyll, an ideal rural pastoral poem about the village called Auburn. These are very remarkable early romantic poems or transitional poems. And then there are the graveyard poets. The graveyard poets, Thomas Parnell, who wrote The Night Peace on Death, Robert Blair, who wrote The Grave, Edward Young, who wrote Complaints or Night Thoughts on Life, Death, and Immortality. Then there is our American graveyard poet. Who is that? William. Cullen Bryant. William Cullen Bryant wrote a famous poem about, about death. Okay, tell me in the chat box, what is William Cullen Bryant's poem? You don't want me to tell you everything. You can tell me a few things. That is right. William Cullen Bryant wrote Thanatopsis. And then there is a famous graveyard poet, Thomas Gray. The graveyard poets wrote all their poems about the graveyards with yew trees. I have seen yew trees. Yew trees are dark trees because they are full of leaves and these leaves are overhanging. It is like a huge umbrella, you know. Very dark. The shade is very dark. It must be really frightening it at night. You know, there will be legends of ghosts or something around yew trees, na? Such poems are graveyard poems. And then Thomas Gray. He was a very major poet, but he was very shy. He shunned limelight. He went to Eton College. And one of his early poems, a Horatian Ode, is called Ode on a Distant Prospect of Eton College. At the same time, in the early period, he wrote him to adversity. Well, that is also a Horatian ode. Later in his life, he wrote an unfinished poem, him to ignorance. And then, very important is his 1851 poem, Elegy, written in a country churchyard. Inspired by his life in his mother's birthplace, Stoke Poges. There is an old stone church there. There are so many churches like that in England. One day we should all go on a literary tour to England. When you really go and see these places, it makes a big difference. Wow. Hmm. Right now there is Corona, I know. No problem. We can always look up amazing pictures in Google. Do that, okay? Look up these places when you study these poems. It is an amazing experience. Elegy written in a country churchyard is a long poem. And it is about the theme, memento mori. Remember, you will die. What do you mean by that? The ordinary people of villages, the rustic forefathers, they don't have big tombs or anything. That doesn't mean they are bad people. That doesn't mean they are good for nothing people. They could also have been great if the only they were given the opportunity. Those who are rich and powerful, beware. Death is the great leveler. Everybody will be equal in front of death. This poem, such a sweet poem. Because the poet is talking about the rustic forefathers and giving them an elegy or a an epitaph with his poem and then he hopes that some passerby, somebody, some poet will give me also a poem like this when I am dead and gone probably. The poem elegy ends with an epitaph of the poet himself. Hey, read the poem, very important. It is part of the English canon. Thomas Gray is remembered as one of the greatest poets of Pindaric Odes in English. Did you know that? He wrote two Pindaric Odes in English. Okay, I will pause for a minute so that you can tell me the names of his Pindaric Odes in the comment box. Tick tick one, tick tick two, 
tick tick three okay one minute is over the two pindari codes are the progress of poesy and the bard i know many of you know that the progress of poesy is about it's like a history of english poetry is about english poetry and the bard is about one of the last of the celtic bards beautiful poems actually hey in some universities they are prescribed you better read them okay then there is a number of horatian odes that he wrote what are his horatian odes him to adversity ode on the spring and ode on a distant prospect of eton college and did you know he wrote an interesting poem who was the best friend of uh, thomas gray it was horace walpole who is horace walpole the writer of gothic romances horace walpole had a cat in fact two cats salima and zara <laughs> one of them drowned in a bowl of gold fishes and thomas gray wrote a mock heroic poem ode on the death of a favorite cat drowned in a bowl of gold fishes <laughs> interesting isn't it apart from all these he also wrote two norse odes on celtic and norse themes norse means scandinavian the fatal sisters and the descent of odin i hope you have taken down taken down all these titles and everything read extra i'm giving you a very clear road map for preparation all the important texts and authors covered in detail please read them extra now the next important transitional poet is william collins william collins wrote a number of odes odes on several descriptive and allegorical subjects wow that is the title of his collection William Collins wrote so wrote odes like ode to pity ode to simplicity ode to evening hey that was very famous evening ode to fear then there is another poet william cowper oh he was a very morbid poet who had depression and such problems and william cowper wrote poems like the progress of error have you heard of that the progress of error and there are two famous poems that he wrote books actually the task and the castaway the task is about simple village scenes but the castaway oh my god a very morbid poem one man is cast away into the sea and he is swimming 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 trying to escape and at the end of all that swimming he drowns oh that's sad The castaway has very important lines that are quoted by Mr. Ramsay in Virgin Isles' novel *To the Lighthouse*. Will you remember that? And then there are two poets, James Macpherson and Thomas Chatterton. Both are interesting. You know why? Because both of them wrote forgeries. Forgeries were important genre at this time. James Macpherson wrote. his own poems and said they are poems by the ancient poet or scion are nahi they were not they were his own poems and he saying no no i didn't write it these are poems by an ancient poet people found out and made fun of him but these poems became very famous or scionic poems have you heard of that uh google search okay because you will get some very eerie dark pictures also paintings are also there were scenic paintings i look up a lot in google so i found out everything like this and i'm sharing it with you and then thomas chatterton wrote his own poems and says nahi nahi i didn't write these poems these are all written by a 15th century monk called thomas rowley nobody believed everybody found out but he became famous for these forgeries as well thomas rowley poems he wrote and now we have to talk about a very important poet william blake william blake is a very major poet he has been called an apocalyptic poet because he talked about the future of mankind the destiny the end of humanity 
William Blake's first poetry collection, which was published by his friends, I think, was Poetical Sketches. Poetical Sketches was followed by his masterpiece, the most famous poems collected in Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience. As the title denotes, Songs of Innocence is about good things in life, in this universe. And Songs of Experience are about the darker realities of life. All of you might have heard of the poems, The Lamb and the Tiger. William Blake wrote in Songs of Innocence poems like Lamb. Little lamb, who made thee? A child is talking to a lamb in that tone. And in tiger, it is more darker. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. Fearful symmetry, that, uh, that phrase occurs in that poem. And it was Northrop Fry who wrote the book Fearful Symmetry about William Blake. William Blake wrote a series of poems like Songs of Innocence and Experience. They were together called Illuminated Poems. Illumination is like throwing a spiritual light into things. It also refers to illumination, the practice of scribes in the medieval period. They wrote with a special ink called Illuminated Ink. Illuminated books were also printed in a special engraving manner. William Blake was not only a poet, he was an engraver and a printer. A part of the illuminated books is his famous Songs of Innocence and of Experience. The two contrary states of the human soul. Another part of illuminated books is the marriage of heaven and hell. There is something in Marriage of Heaven and Hell that many of you will know. Very famous. What is that? He says that Milton is the devil's party without knowing it. Hey, William Blake greatly admired Milton. You know, Milton was a true poet. And what did he do? He depicted God and Satan, but he stepped beyond the confines of religion and depicted God as a little bit of a tyrant and Satan as heroic, more heroic than God. William Blake said, wow, Milton was a true poet because he depicted not heroes and villains, but true human nature. His Satan is like the real hero of Paradise Lost. So, A Marriage of Heaven and Hell is also an illuminated book. Now, guys, A Marriage of Heaven and Hell and some other books were written in the place called Lambeth. So, it is also called Lambeth Book. There are a group of books by William Blake called Lambeth Books. Another category of books is there by William Blake. I told you he's an apocalyptic poet. He wrote in the manner of the Hebrew poets. They are called prophetic books. Milton, Jerusalem, America a prophecy, Europe a prophecy. So many prophetic books are there by Blake. And in these prophetic books, he develops an idea of personal mythology. He drew from Hebrew Old Testament culture certain characters and developed them, wrote books about them, characters like Albion, the universal man. You know, you, have, you must all have seen Avengers, the movies. What is Avengers? It is like an alternate world. Heroes are there in that world, their story is there. Like that, 100 years or 150 years before Avengers, here is William Blake creating such a mythology. His own heroes and their adventures in order to throw light on human action. These are all allegorical of human beings, of course. Did you understand the prophetic books? And William, Bla uh, William Blake has been called uh, an apocalyptic poet, I told you. It was Harold Bloom who wrote the book Blake's Apocalypse. Blake's Apocalypse. 
Blake has written a lot of works actually, lots of works. The Four Zoas, Ghost of Abel, Auguries of Innocence. Have you heard of that poem? Very famous and beautiful. To see a world in a grain of sand. Wow. You know, to see a world in a grain of sand. Heaven in a wild flower. To hold eternity in the palm of your hand and infinity in an hour. Famous lines from Auguries of Innocence. And then towards the end of his career, there is also an amazing book called The Everlasting Gospel. It's about Christ. Hey, did you know? I'll tell you something interesting. The beat poet Allen Ginsberg, one day in his flat, he got the Blake vision. <clears throat> he began to hear William Blake's voice. Reading poetry. Oh my God. It went on for three days. Blake vision. So, that is about the transitional poets. So many of them, wonderful, excellent poets who paved the way for romanticism. That is a lot of reading for you to do, guys. Please read on your own. Grow tall and strong like banyan trees. And I will be back with the next video, more on romantics. Until then, bye-bye.